Welcome to the Lighthouse Financial Advisors Money Over 50 podcast with Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Lighthouse Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Hello and welcome to Money Over 50 with Dallas and Michael. Uh, today's headline for the weekly wrap-up is 27% off everything. Again. Again. Or was, still. Or, st- or, still <laughs> or still. <laughs> that, that was the exact same figure as last week, wasn't it? It hasn't gone. Yeah, it was the exact same figure. So there was a, there was a, a, the smallest of small differences. Yeah. Uh, last week, the ASX 200... Uh, closed and this week it closed up three points from last week, which is, <laughs> which is uh, <laughs> over 5,300 points. Over yes. 5,300 points. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, no, 5,200 points. So. Now, I know that you're thinking the same thing as me about this, where it's sort of comical to go uh, nothing. The, so the ASX has closed at the same level it did a week ago. If you actually looked day to day, there's been huge swings this week still. Massive, some massive swings. Um, yeah, so Friday was uh, the markets fell something like five percent. Yeah, just so, yeah, just close, so closed five percent down on on Friday for the day. So, so obviously it had it had to have gone up by five percent over Monday through to Thursday. I think I think was it Wednesday was a two point seven or two percent, two point eight percent up day or something like that. It was it was again very very volatile week. Yeah, look, look, it certainly was, and yeah, I can't remember if it was Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday because it doesn't really matter. And I mean, we, yeah. we, we <laughs> yeah. um, people are often surprised at our at our, um, I lack guess, of our interest or knowledge about lack of day-to-day interest day-to-day of, of day to day movements. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But 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 it really doesn't matter. But it is it is interesting because that's obviously what I think my takeaway from a lot of this stuff is that because we've been, you know, uh, yeah, we are we are at the moment getting ready for end of financial year reviews and all the rest of it, and so we're pulling reports and those sorts of things that are um, you, you'd probably know we're probably noticing more the day to day movements than before. The one takeaway from it all that I every time I look at the market going up three percent today, down five percent today, the main takeaway that that I get out of it is just to say, just don't look at it. Literally, it, it just is completely uh, irrational. There is no, there is no method to a lot of this madness. There is no deeper hidden meaning. I think that's that's the the thing that's interesting is like human beings, we look for patterns always, and so it's it's like a poking machine in that the, this the thing the reason pokies work so well is because people feel like they, they've their brain looks at it and goes, well, there must be some pattern here or some method or some way to work through this. Whereas my real, my belief is that the day-to-day price movements or market movements, there's just actually no rhyme or reason to it. And and there's nothing that you can, more research won't allow you to predict day-to-day whether the market is going to close up or down next Monday or Tuesday. So there's really nothing that you can do to try and predict that. So just don't don't bother yourself with it. Don't even look at it. Look, yeah, there's certainly no making a pattern of it in the short term, and and people yeah. do, you know, yeah. um, try to do that. And yeah. look, it it even stumps some of the highest paid, most respected professional money managers, yeah, around the world, day yeah. after day, month after yeah. month, year after year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there 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 are a lot of um, yeah, yeah. For, for just just to digress a little bit, there are a lot of professional fund managers in America. Yeah. who have egg all over their face at the moment. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, they've purposely yeah. left out companies that they thought were significantly overvalued, um, yeah. like your Netflix and yeah. Um, yeah, your Facebooks and your Amazons and all those types of things. They said, no, we're, they did this a couple yeah. of years ago. We're, we're going to leave them. We're, we're gonna, yeah. We think they're overvalued. We think they're going to drop. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to leave them out of our, um, yeah. out of our fund. Yeah. And um, they've just had egg on their face. Year after yeah. year. There's just no predicting this thing in the short term. Yeah. Look, yeah. over the long, that yeah. begs the question: Why are we invested in this, and why? Yeah. Are we quite, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. It's it's a over look over the longer term. It's it's a very very predictable, very yeah. very predictable thing. So 
Look, um, yeah. you extend out time horizons over 10, 15 years and, yeah. and, and um, on rolling average yeah. years, you see such predictability and you see yeah. such predictability that uh, yeah. in, the, in the range of returns over that period of time, that uh, significantly adds value to, to people's yeah. retirement savings. In the yeah. short term, it's just crazy. It's absolutely yeah. crazy in, in and, terms and of what it can. And it's funny because obviously with new clients, we, we, we tend to spend a fair bit of time in, in our initial meetings talking about things that we can't do. And this comes back to what we talked mm-hmm. about the other day, which is that intellectual humil- humility of being able to say things that we know and things that we don't know. So, mm. select, and, and the, the terms that, that, that are used, or I guess the, the technical terms would be selection and timing. So, mm. so the, the two parts that first, I guess what we're talking about there is that timing, which is going day to day. I have no idea what the market is going to do. I have no idea next week whether, you know, when we're recording this in a week's time, I don't know whether it'll be 27% off everything, 37% off everything or 17% off everything. And just have no, no interest in, I don't, I don't know that and I don't even know how you would try and predict that based on everything that we've seen throughout history, but it'll, particularly over the last few weeks while things have been volatile. It's the lesson I take from it all is you just go, there is no way to try and follow news headlines or try and read things coming out um, about you know, what's happening in the economy and then try and make a, a prediction in the short term as to where markets are heading. So you just, you cannot do it. It's, it's, is absolutely crazy in it. So, if we, I mean, we spoke about America last week. So, the the largest five hundred companies in America, yeah, um, they're currently only down sixteen percent from yeah. their previous highs. Now, until last night, when yeah. which was their Friday, uh, the end yeah. of the week, where they fell three yeah. percent, that edged up even further. They're only down thirteen uh, yeah. percent from the previous <laughs> highs. Now, if you like, like if you read the headlines and you, yeah. and you read all the jobless figures coming through from America and you read um, yeah. the number of, of deaths that they've had, um, yeah. obviously New York's been, and, and those Eastern states have been, have yeah. um, copped the brunt of uh, yeah. a lot of the coronavirus cases and death. If yeah. you read that and yes. you said, okay, well, well what, what do you um, think has happened? In throughout the history, what would that? typically happen during that yeah. period of time? you would expect it to be down 40%. Uh, yeah. I mean, if someone said it's yeah. down 40%, I would say yeah. that sounds yeah. about right. But yeah. it was down until last yeah. night. It was down only yeah. 13%. And it edged up, edged up, edged up. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I guess I spoke about my theory, my 51 percent. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, not get, I'm not even getting back into your theory, mate. That we won't terrible. get back into it, but, but, <laughs> but, but my, my, my theory was the markets are scared. Yeah. Uh, not out. of dropping further at the moment. They're yeah. scared yeah. that the recovery will come faster, and yeah. and people are scared that they're going to miss out. Which is why the yeah. pro- my theory is is which yeah. is why the price has been edging up, edging up, edging up. So we'll we'll wait and yeah. see. Of course, yeah. only time but will guess, tell. But I guess it sort of makes a point of like with even with even with our theories. Of, and obviously, we we love a good thought experiment or a good theory. So based on that theory. You, it doesn't tell you. It, it still doesn't tell you whether you should be whether you should be invested now or next week. You know what I mean? No. Like, whether that happens or doesn't happen, whether whether things open back up or not, like given that we've all of the numbers that have come out out of America in the last month and their market has has climbed back. You know, it's up fifteen twenty percent since the the very bottom. It's you couldn't have, even if you'd known the numbers, you wouldn't have been able to make investment philosophy out of it anyway in the short no. term. No, so that's right. That, that's, I guess, the, so to go back to what we were saying there about things we can't do, timing being the first one, we just have no idea. In the short term, we have no idea what the market will do. All I know is that when someone comes to see me at 55 and they want to retire in 10 years' time, I know that on average, a diversified group of companies in Australia and around the world will be worth more money in 10 years' time than what they are now relative to being invested in cash. So that's the sort of time frame where 10 years is really that minimum figure that you're looking at as to what do I think will happen? Well, on average, historically, you will be better off being fully invested with a 10-year time horizon. And then when you take into account that you know, you're going to be you're retiring in 10 years' time and you're going to want to be retired and growing income for 20 or 30 years, you start to look at that as to, right, well, what, what happens on average over a 30, 40-year time frame? And that's what you were just talking about, those rolling averages. So you go, 
you realize that we have no idea what the market will do in the short term, but we can be relatively confident in what the market will do over 10 years time and then getting more and more confident over 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. So that's the, that's the big thing for us is that not only do we not know what the market can do in the short term, but it just doesn't matter because it, it's really 30, 40 years down the road that we're thinking about this. Well, it's, it certainly is. And you, you raise a, a really good point there because I think people are, people are really fixated on uh, the year that they're going to retire. And I've, I've heard this comment from yeah. multiple people over the years where yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they, I guess a really big fear is, okay, what if we have a, another global financial crisis the year that I retire? Yeah. Uh, what if we have another big market downturn the year that I retire? And yeah. um, I always say to them, look, it doesn't really matter because, yeah. because on average, we're only taking 5% of the yeah. value of your entire retirement savings as an income in that yeah. first year of your retirement. Yeah. Now, um, obviously, we're going to have some cash to the side as well that yeah. we can draw upon, uh, yeah. would, which would generally be more than that 5%. So yeah, things are down for, for example, I, I guess people's um, implied fear into that is that they don't want to be selling any of their company for yeah. a 30% drop. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you know, um, what, what they're, they're often surprised though from when I say to them, look, it doesn't really matter what's happening there. Um, at the worst case scenario, even if we didn't have any cash to the side, yeah. Um, all you're right. selling in that first year of your retirement is somewhere in the vicinity of about 5% of the value yeah. of your overall retirement yeah. savings. So, yeah, so right. what that means is, yeah. and this is a really simple example, what that yeah. means is that you still have 95% of the that value stays um, that stays invested. Yeah. And history would say that the year after you retired, like one year later, if Murphy's yeah. Law did come true, yeah. that... Um, yeah, that, that would have risen and recovered quite a bit over that period yeah. of time. Yeah. And again, you take, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of, of 5% of your overall retirement savings yeah. in that second year of your retirement. It, and it's really, it is really the time horizon of 20, 30, 40 years that well, you need to look at as opposed to the, the next yeah. 10 years between now and, at 55 and, and, and turning 65 and retiring. Well, and that's uh, when we talked about this the other day um, in, in uh, last week. I think they were talking about you know uh, my own personal financial planning. Where you go, it's sort of a silly concept to say that you know there's there's a there's an old saying that you know financial advisors like a, a question that financial advisors are supposed to ask clients of what's your time horizon, and it's just mm. the craziest question in the world because you go for every different person every that they have a multitude of different time horizons for different amounts of money. So like you're saying mm. there, if you're 55 and you're retiring in 10 years time, you've got some money if you, and you, you know, hopefully you live to 95, some of your money needs to be earmarked for that 39th year. You know what I mean? So, so the way that you invest that money and the way that you think about that money should be very different to the money that you need to, when you need to go and pay for groceries this afternoon. You, you don't have one set time horizon. You don't have one set, you know, time frame that you need to be looking to access that money. So it's really more about what we try and do with that. With rather than trying to time what we think the market will do in the short term, it's really just about cash flow matching. Where you're going, we want you to be invested in the way that lines up with historically what we, what is the best asset class for you to be invested into for the for the amount of time until you actually need that. So that money that you need for thirty years time you can be a hundred percent invested in that because it, it just doesn't matter what happens with, doesn't matter, matter what happens with the market next week because you don't need to sell those assets. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we've also touched on this before. Uh, I call it personification of money, but I, I think it's the wrong term. <laughs> An but... Anthropomorphization. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, uh, I think you just wanted to, 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 um, yeah. to yeah, trump into bigger interest. words, <laughs> but yeah, a little bit of your money needs to be like your grandma. Where, yeah, and just um, make you feel good. Yeah, you know, she 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 doesn't move that quickly, and and she she gives you nice warm hugs, and yeah, um, you know, she bakes and all those types of things, but she doesn't she doesn't run the hundred meters too fast, yeah. and she doesn't yeah. go out there and earn a lot of money. Yeah, um, and that's your cash money. So yeah. you know, if you need a if you need a hug, 
you go to your yeah. cash money. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and you take some of that money out. Now, some yeah. of your money, a big proportion of your money, needs to be like a yeah. um, a highly paid or over overly expensive consultant. Yeah, that when she's working yeah. and consulting to some of these big companies around Australia yeah. or the world, yeah, she's very very highly paid. Yeah. However, working, there's working, periods yeah. of time where in between contracts yeah. where um, she's not working and yeah. she's actually going backwards in that period yeah. of time or he or she's going backwards. So, yeah. so, but then they get another contract and then they grow um, at yeah. you know, 10 times the rate of, of uh, yeah. grandma's, <laughs> grandma's uh, age income function. coming in, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. so um, that's that's really that's really how because your money the day that you retire is the day that your money goes to work and yeah. makes a return for you now you need some of your money like yeah. behaving like granny yeah. where they're not making a lot of money but they're not going yeah. backwards yeah. they're quite consistent yeah. and you need some yeah. money yeah working like the highly or over <laughs> overly paid uh, yeah consultant. Uh, consultant yeah and the, and the, the it's interesting because I, I was just talking about this before uh, with you before we got on this call about the what I actually find works really well for people is the 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 fewer times you can make this decision, the better off you will be. If that makes sense. So yep. the more that you can look at this once and go right, I, I have ten years of working life, and then I have hopefully thirty years of retirement, and do the whole go through the whole process of matching up. Okay, what money do I need? invested in that way from my you know from years 20 through to 30 and all the rest of it you do that once and then you set an investment strategy or a philosophy based on that and then you just don't think you what you really need to do then is not think about it again and that's mm. so I, I was just talking about that with you where i actually bought some bought some cattle a year ago uh, with my with my, my mother and father and so because i've been removed from it so we 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 had a thesis a year ago that cattle numbers were going to decline and prices were going to go up. And we bought those cattle. And because I'm removed from that, from that world to some degree, things have just gone up, down and sideways over the last year. And I've had no idea. I don't know what the prices have really been doing week to week. And so now we're just looking at it again now to, to sell some. And I haven't had any of the stress or any of the headaches of having to pay attention to when the market's been you know, down or, or to get too euphoric when things are going up because I just haven't haven't known, haven't looked at it, haven't thought about it. And it was it was just reminded me of like this week in the markets where if someone said I uh, I'm going to check my my balance, uh, you know, every Friday afternoon. If they checked it last Friday afternoon, they'd they'd be and then they checked it again this Friday afternoon. They'd be in exactly the same situation. The only thing they've avoided is. Days of euphoria, days of you know, absolute fear when the market's dropping in free fall, down 5%, all that kind of thing. So you haven't actually, there's been no, no loss by not being aware of that or just tuning that out completely. And, and that's kind of what we were talking about is trying to take a bigger picture. That is, if you go, I'm just going to invest in this way and then I'm going to revisit it in 10 years time when I, when I get close to retirement. You then, you then don't, it just doesn't matter month to month what, what the market does because you're just not aware of it. You don't have to be aware of it. It doesn't matter at all. You know that your investment strategy is lined up with when you need that money and you just worry about it when it comes time. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a great point and, it, and it, it brings it back to sticking to the strategy. So, yeah, so, you know, you, you revisit the strategy. Okay, markets yeah. are down now. Oh, I feel a little bit uneasy. Yeah. Um, What's the strategy again? Okay, well, yeah, we did need a rate of return on our retirement yep. savings well over and above what the term deposit yes. rates yep. and the bond rates and all that are. Okay, that's why we're invested in this thing that's volatile. We're yep. well and truly diversified in this yep. case uh, yep. you know, around Australian companies and around the world uh, in companies. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, 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 I know why we. I, I've reminded myself again why we've done this. Yeah. Um, now let's just forget about that, and yeah. and I can control what I can control, which is yeah. I'm an expert in my field. I go to work. I earn money. Yeah. I put money into my retirement savings yeah. every fortnight yeah. when I get paid, and yeah. I forget about it. And then yeah. over time, um, yeah. we have success because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because I, I had a similar thought this week. I got talking to a mate over in, in England, actually, Mullet, 
there you go, Mullen, if you listen to this. The, uh, and he was asking about similar sort of things. He's going, well, why, why is the market back up? Yeah, in, especially in America, it's back up 13%. And his, his pension account in the UK is up. And we started to get into the weeds of... Did you tell him about my theory? Did you say, well... Uh... <laughs> no, no, I didn't tell him about your theory. <laughs> I, we started to get into the weeds of... Like, we use different examples of companies where you go, okay, so NAB in Australia or Lloyds Bank in England, you know, they're any asset is is based on the the price of that asset is based on the future cash flows that you get from it so if you think mm. nab is going to make x amount in profits over the next 30 years of their of their life which is you know how long they might be around for your valuation is based on those cash flows and we started to get into the weeds of you know what are loans likely to you know what loans are likely to be bad debts over the next year or two and and then likely and we started to talk about it and then i just went I, we are just absolutely dribbling here. Neither of us have any idea what is like, I don't know anything about NAB and their loan book and where they even make their profits from. I got no idea. Mm. You got no idea. And we both have no idea what's going to happen in the next six months. So we're just driving ourselves mad trying to, trying to, you know, predict what we think will happen with this one company with the next six months. It's, it's just it's like exactly, exactly. Like, and that was what I ended with. So, well, if you're actually worried, if you're worried about it, go to work, go and, go and, go and find some, find a, find a job, go and find something paying work, go and do something that you're an expert in and just don't worry about what this, what the, what the market is saying that your, your Lloyds bank shares are worth for the next week. It just doesn't, it makes no difference. No, absolutely. It, it doesn't. And uh, it's really easy to get caught up in the day to day, week to week, because the news comes out day to day and it comes yeah. out week to week. Yeah. And um, the media long, long ago worked out that bad news sells, bad news, good news doesn't. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's obviously, uh, yeah. you know, we're driving that as, as the population. Uh, yeah. we're, con- yeah. we're obviously consuming yeah. bad news and we tune yeah. out to good news because yeah. good news, good but news. I, get, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it's just like um, walking through yeah. the jungle. Um, yeah. you, you, well, you, tune, you tune out to the... Uh, to yeah, the to the nice, you're yeah. really, really tuned in to, to, to the tiger. tiger's yeah. growl. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, but this is what we just talked about that before about those headlines and and how even even when we try to fit a headline to a market movement, you realise that it, it's it's the other way around. So, you know, like we, it, it, well, it is. The, market like, I mean, the headlines, the headlines this week, and in fact, um, it might have happened last night or yesterday. But but uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison has said that um that we need to restart the economy exact words yeah. and he said yeah. we can't keep australia under the doona which is very yeah. fitting we're, we, yeah. we're <laughs> suffering a cold snap up here in north <laughs> queensland and it's i think it's uh an yeah. overnight of 21 and a and a, a high today of 29 it's it's, yeah. it's freezing yeah. freezing yeah. conditions so yeah um yeah. so yeah so you know with that with that news you would expect that things would would lift a little bit wouldn't you but that but you just you just cannot you cannot um some of the other news coming out well uh well it's not not necessarily coming out but um we spoke last week about sweden so yeah. i think the world is looking at sweden to some extent so no um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know you know it's funny i looked at this the other day the, uh, someone did a really good job of going to so sweden is the the case study that everyone uses but you, depending on which countries you compare it to, and depending on what time frames and what metrics you use, you can make Sweden be whatever you want Sweden. To be. Well, you can. So, so, <laughs> um, so basically, so Sweden claimed that in Stockholm, in the big city, uh, at least thirty percent of people will currently have some level of immunity. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that means yeah. we we won't dwell on that. I don't know if it means they've been exposed to the coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have 256 deaths per 1 million of population. Yeah. And Australia, to put things into perspective, have we have four deaths per 1 million of population. Now, if you were to look at those numbers side by side and say, okay, Australia, four deaths per 1 million, um, Sweden, 256 deaths per 1 million, 
um, you could present that any way you want. You could you could yeah. actually say you could you could percent you could make that a percentage. So you could yeah. um yeah 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 you well, could you could you could, you could say yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, could say Sweden's thousands yeah, sixty percent times higher more, than sixty, yeah, 60 times. times more deaths in Australia. Or you could say uh, relative to other causes of death, it's it's a vanishingly small figure. Or you could yeah you could say whatever you wanted. To. I mean, why I think why I think the world is looking at Sweden though. And and not the, not so much the world, but this is built into the markets as well. Um, Two hundred and fifty six deaths per million. Uh, not to downplay the human element to that, but in 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 larger perspective, it's still a relatively low number, isn't it? I mean, two hundred and fifty six yeah. um, divided by divided by one million. It's 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 it's, it's still a relatively low number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, if we're talking future economy wise and all those types of things. So Yeah. So um that's I mean what I but that's what I that's think I guess there the, is that, the that, that they're a little bit of a study, a case study, Sweden, that um and, and, and I'm convinced that that is factored into the to the market prices now. So so right. I would expect that our markets would be down more, I would expect that American markets would be down more. Um, based on what is predicted to happen, however, um, I think yeah, built into that is the fact that that it hasn't overrun a country, a country like Sweden, for example, have had very little, very little social distancing measures in place. I mean, they've still had uh, restaurants, um, bars, and things like that open, and they've they've yeah. they've more or less gotten on with life as as normal over there. Yeah. See. Ya. I um, I guess that's that's the thing about it is like, it's interesting because I was thinking about this during the week about the minute I start to go, the minute I start to find myself going, what do I? Th- it's, a, it's like a, have you heard of the three body problem in physics where, it's like if you hit a pool ball, you kind of know roughly where the pool ball is going to go, and if you hit one pool ball into another pool ball, you can mm. kind of roughly work out where the second one's going to go. But the minute you hit a pool ball into a pool ball into a pool ball. It's nearly impossible to predict the third ball over over any length of time. So, what I reckon happens when you look at the news is you go, what we what we try and do again. This is the human brain. We try and fit this back to going, what do I think is going to happen with coronavirus? And and we're basing that on our limited knowledge and and it's just the knowledge that we have put in front of us. And it's. Mm. It's not. It's it's really not normally something that we. Yeah, we're not experts in infectious mm. diseases. We don't really know. It's based on kind of anecdotal evidence and how we feel at the time. So we make a prediction based on that. Then we make a prediction based on what do I think that means for uh, company prices in in the short term. And then and then off the back of that, we kind of tend to make a weird prediction about what we think that means for the permanent impairment of profits for companies over the next thirty years. And so mm. that's kind of my thing is we we take we take a, a a measurement which we don't really know, which is how much profit will NAB make over the next thirty years, and we try and backfit that to something that we can grab a hold of and that we can try and find a pattern in. And so we go. Why has the NAB share price gone up or down this week? Well, it's because of, um, you know, hospitality industry is going to reopen and that means that their loan book to hospitality industry isn't going to be as impaired as what they thought. And that's, you get, we, we get no idea. We really got no idea. And we're trying to like backfit a valuation based on 30 years of cash flows to a question about, you know, what, what does Scott Morrison say this week or what does, what's... Look, I, I, don't, I don't doubt that. I guess my point is I, I believe that the the price of the markets in Australia and America um, yeah. uh, reflect the fact that um, the markets don't think yeah. that the long term the, yeah. the markets think I, I believe that the markets think that life is going to get back to to normal well, faster than yeah. normal um, yeah. and and look, the other thing that I think as well is that uh, so the global financial crisis really isn't that long ago. So, you know, we're talking about 2008, 2009. Um, now, I, I, I ran into a lot of people back then who, who honestly believed the world was going to end. Um, yeah. They honestly believed that. So, <laughs> yeah. so they believed, yeah. like, there was some crazy stuff being said then. Yeah. Um, stuff like capitalism 
is dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything yeah, was going to yeah. be state run. Like, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. banks were getting, some of the banks were going broke, big banks were getting bailed out by, yeah. um, you know, America, the American government, yeah. and, and people were saying just crazy stuff like capitalism yeah. is dead. Yeah. And we're going to have uh, state-run enterprises similar to the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah. You know, stuff, stuff like that. Now, um, the world didn't end. And if you look at the top 500 companies in America, I mean, they, they started the global financial crisis at around $1,500 a share, dropped to $676 per share uh, in March of 2009, and then grew to 3400 dollars per share and now they're back to two thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars per share so so yeah. they they're almost double still what yeah. they were going into the yeah. at the start of the global financial and, crisis and that's, that's exactly what and, we're just and doing i think, I think people are out. looking back to that and go well hey yeah. we thought the world was going to end then we thought capitalism yeah. was dead um, yeah. it didn't happen yeah. in yeah. fact not only did it not happen since that period yeah. of time those uh the values or the prices of those companies have doubled. That's even yeah. taken into consideration yeah. uh, the 16% drop that they're down right now yeah. from the previous one. Yeah. Um, I think all of that's built in as well. And people yeah. are saying, okay, well, you know, the world isn't going to end. Uh, these companies aren't going to go broke. Yeah. And that's where I believe, I truly believe that the markets and the people are scared, not of the, the markets right now going lower. They're scared that they're going to recover yeah. faster than normal. And yeah. um, and they're loath to actually yeah. panic out of them, or or, or, or loath to um, I guess that, keep right. so much cash sitting on the sidelines. They're they're actually yeah. investing money now. Yeah, well, and it's one of those things where you go like the efficient market hypothesis is, is not this this you know the theory of the price of NAB or of any of these companies is all of that information is known to the public. The price of something can't possibly, yeah. You know, we talk about the the price is always reflects all that known information, but mm. but there's there's still a range of possible outcomes. So you kind of go, absolutely company prices right now are based on, well, there's probably there's a best case scenario, there's a yeah, there's a medium medium case scenario, and there's a worst case scenario. And the price of you know, NAB, for example, any of these other companies has to reflect all those different outcomes and what could potentially happen. And so you, mm. you kind of go, even, even if you, if you said like, yeah, I think things will go straight back to normal, well then you would probably price things differently. Mm. But, but you also have to, like we were saying before, you have to be able to hold in your, in your head at the same time, the thought that, well, if things don't go straight back to normal, what else might happen? And then mm. I feel like we, we've spent a half an hour talking about a thing that the end result is, this is why we invest in index funds and this is why we don't try and turn the market short term because we go, we don't know what's going to happen. We just know that on average, you know, the market is pretty efficient at pricing what things are worth and what the profits of companies will be over the long term. And you just have to, I guess, have faith in that, that over the next 20, 30 years, company profits will continue to be made and you will, as a shareholder, get to enjoy them and, that's what you should be invested into if you if you need that money in 20, 30 years time. And that's, that's really all it comes back to. Yeah, look, it's a, um, it's a really good point. And, and uh, I'd be happy to wrap up now because yeah. I don't really have too much else to add. <laughs> yeah. So what about yeah. yourself, Dallas? Do you have anything to add? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think that that's like we say, we, we sometimes, probably disappoint people where we say we're going to have a weekly update and, and, and then we go, this is what happened. We don't really know why we don't really know what's going to happen next week, but we just, I guess our message is always stay focused on the long term and any long-term plan. And if you don't have a long-term plan, you probably need one. Yeah, certainly, certainly the long-term plan, it, it does put it all in, into perspective. And when you revisit that, and yeah. you say, okay, yeah, why am I doing these things? Why am I in this again? Oh, that's right. Yeah. If I was, if I was in the alternative, which is cash and bonds, yeah, um, you know, I would fall short of about five hundred thousand yeah. dollars of where I need to be um, yeah. to fund my retirement. And say, okay, that's why I'm in this again. That now yeah. it all makes sense. Why? Why? Actually, yeah, um, that's a that's a good point. That, that's that's sort of what I I meant to sort of touch on is to say that I noticed even with myself where. 
so we obviously had a, a financial planning meeting Friday last week. And since after that, where we came up with, Rodder, this is what uh, my wife and I are going to do with our money. Uh, this is the plan over the next few years. I've noticed that even even for myself, I've I've paid less less attention to market movements in in the short term because I know, I know this is what I'm doing over the next few weeks. This is what I'm getting organised. This money is going to be invested. This money isn't. So it now kind of doesn't really matter because that doesn't none of the none of the market movements impact my plan because we because we have that that plan in place of what needs to happen now and what needs to happen over the next five ten years. So. You, when you have that in place, it's much easier to just tune everything out and forget about it because you know it's not going to impact your decisions. Yeah, I think a uh, great place to wrap up. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Lighthouse Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.